So the AI video generator that we have all been waiting for is here. It's awesome and you can use it today. It's not Sora, which was killed by Vidu, according to a bunch of YouTubers anyhow. Uh, and then Vidu was then killed by Google's Vu, and then Vu was killed by Kling, which we just saw recently, but you had to have a Chinese mobile phone number in order to access that. But all that is in the past now. I've had access to this new model for a couple of days now, so we're gonna run through the whole thing. Plus I've got uh, at least one exclusive piece of information for you. Okay, let's dive in. So this new model is from Luma Labs, who I have covered in, on the channel in the past. They had uh, Genie, which was a text to 3D generator. Well, now they have released their new AI video model, Dream Machine. And I mean, this thing is insane. So not only can Dream Machine do text to video, but it can also do image to video, which is something we have not seen from Sora as of yet. We're gonna take a look at examples that I generated from both sides in just a minute, and we'll go over you know, what it's really great at and you know where it's still kind of lacking. For some quick technical specs, Dream Machine does generate at 128 by 720. Uh, the clips are around five seconds and they generate, well, on the website, they say less than 120 seconds. I've definitely not waited as long as two minutes, so it is faster than that. The UI is dead simple, which to be honest is actually kind of refreshing right now. Um, there is a little tick box for enhanced prompt depending on the length of your prompt if you just want to give it something fairly simple. Uh, I'm just gonna run the Sora Tokyo Woman prompt and let's see what we get. And the Tokyo Woman prompt indeed gets us the Dream Machine version of that prompt. Now, I never really liked a one-to-one -one compare to Sora prompt, so we're gonna modify this prompt in just a little bit and take a look at you know where I think things are much more interesting. And then obviously, if you wanna use an image reference, uh, you simply hit the little photo button here and then upload a photo. Now, I'm always a fan of starting off with text to video, namely because that gives you a really good idea of what the model is capable of. So uh, kicking off with with a, a cinematic action scene, a hitman bald wearing a black suit in an abandoned factory in a shootout against other assassins yielded this, which is super cool. I mean, very dynamic, very action packed. The second version from that same prompt, uh, you know, obviously per prompt, you get two generations, uh, yielded this as a result. And yes, while there is some decoherence and a little bit of you know kind of morphiness i think that there's so much like action-packed dynamic movement happening in here uh like with the handheld camera and everything that it, I, I really don't mind is it perfect no it is not it still does weird ai video stuff uh but it does so at a much higher quality and i mean honestly the, that makes the results that much more funny. This one actually wasn't bad. This is a beautiful pirate woman, crosses her arms while standing on the deck of a pirate ship. Uh, Longtime channel viewers, you may know where we're headed when we hit image to video. And while I don't think that this shot is bad, we do end up, you know, midway through cutting to a reverse angle. Uh, that said, I, you know, I got to admit, like, you know, as our pirate woman kind of moves towards him, she's kind of rolling up her arms there, like, this dude's getting punched. We'll be rolling back to that pirate ship scene in just a little bit uh, because I've got a pretty Pretty cool hack for you. Another quick text to video example. This is a young man walking alone on a beach, foggy sky full of dark clouds, soft, sad atmosphere, noise video shot by retro camera. I mean, this is 100% a shot from a music video. I mean, very clearly sung by someone with a British accent, likely about having never seen the sun. But to note that atmospheric prompts like foggy sky full of dark clouds and the soft, sad atmosphere definitely do play a pretty major part when you are using text to video. Again, because I want to set expectations and not cherry pick here, uh, this was another version from that same prompt. So interestingly, in terms of that enhanced prompt, I wanted to see what would happen if we turned it off. So uh, I ended up taking, here's another sore example, but it's uh, Paul Trello's, you know, massive long block of text uh, that he used as a sore prompt for his music video uh, and ran that. And I mean, we kind of get some fairly comparable results. Granted, our shots are not necessarily as long as Paul's are, and I didn't modify the prompt through the various shots as Paul did, and to be honest, I only ran it like you know three times, whereas Paul ran his about 700. But I will say that even though these are only five second snippets, it definitely shows that, I mean, in my opinion, that this model is definitely on a Sora level. Now, I do have a trick coming up in just a minute to show you how you can extend these shots and probably get them up to something more like one minute. 
But my method is kind of more of a hack workaround. I did talk to Luma about adding extensions in, and they said the model itself is capable of pushing out as far as they wanted it to, but uh, you know, obviously things start to break down. Uh, and what they said is that, you know, characters will just kind of end up standing still and there won't be a ton of motion when you start pushing past the, like that 10 second mark. Finally, before moving over to image to video, yes, of course I had to run Will Smith eating spaghetti and these were the awesome and hilarious results. Uh, so yes, clearly uh, this model still does not pass the Smith test. So sliding over to image to video, which is the thing that I think that most of you are probably going to be interested in. Uh, the first one that I ran was an image that I generated for another project. This is a synth playing a synth. I, I thought it was funny. And running that through Luma gets us this result, which is super impressive. Um, you know, there is a little bit of morphing maybe going on in her fingers, you know, fingers playing piano, kind of tough for AI video. But more important than that is the fact that, you know, the background stays very coherent. The character doesn't end up morphing out. Like, I'm actually surprised at the level of detail that it keeps on sort of the synth suit as well. Uh, you know, other models like previous video generators, I, I think you would just see a lot more, uh, you know, decoherence, shifting and morphing going on given that level of detail. The other thing that I want to shout out is her facial expressions. I mean, granted, there isn't a ton of it, but she's, you know, she's a synth. She's not going to be extremely emotional, uh, but she does kind of have a little bit of stank lip going on there as she's playing. Uh, so whatever she's playing is definitely very like maybe it's a Daft Punk song. It's definitely got some funk in there. And of course, you know, I'm going to run one of the channel's favorite recurring characters, Dutch football player, Daniela Van den Ock, dressed as a pirate. And by far, this is definitely the best output of you know that image that we have seen yet. I will definitely say that the Luma camera AI uh, for sure is shooting for a very specific audience here. And I will say that giving specific actions to characters, which we actually have not seen as of yet, uh, can result in a little bit of weirdness. Uh, for example, taking the Daniela shot again and then giving it the prompt to have her cross her arms. That's the you know pirate example that we saw in the text to video uh, portion. Um, yeah, I mean, it. it definitely loses some stuff. I mean, we definitely get a lot of like uh, morphed AI fingers and hands and, and definitely the arms kind of fold in and become like one weird kind of like David Cronenberg sausage there. That said, that is just one output. I'm sure that if I spent a, a lot of time re-rolling that shot, we probably could have gotten something a lot better. That said, you can get some really good results by prompting action. Uh, for example, in this image to video uh, output, this was a young blonde princess turns and looks towards the camera and smiles. I did give some descriptions like uh, she's in a garden full of flowers and birds, a close look, a castle in the background, uh, fantasy movie style. Um, yeah, though it definitely followed directions here in terms of, you know, our gal turns and she definitely does smile towards camera. In terms of camera direction, it was a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, you know, sometimes if I ask it to pan, tilt, you know, dolly or zoom, it would. Uh, and then other times, uh, like in this case where I took a Batman image and what I was hoping it would do is rotate around to uh, show Gotham. Uh, but what instead, it just gave me a hard cut. So, you know, it kind of cheated it. It, it works, um, but it was a cheat. We're gonna roll back to Batman in just a second, but here's another example of, uh, you know, kind of cheating the directions. Uh, in this, I had prompted for a wizard holding an orb. The camera zooms in on the orb and transitions into an epic fantasy battle scene. Uh, so obviously what I was looking for here was actually the camera to directly go into the orb and the reflection to kind of turn into an epic fantasy battle scene. Um, what we ended up getting, of course, was, you know, you kind of move into it and hard cuts over to, I don't know if I'd exactly call that battle epic. It is funny that in my head, I was thinking, you know, like epic fantasy battle scene, like like a Peter Jackson kind of like Lord of the Rings level uh, battle sequence. And what we got was, you know, this is what you're getting on a budget. This is like 32 extras on a soundstage. But remember, what is really impressive there is that it did manage to do a transition like that and it, you know, totally stayed consistent with our initial image reference. There was no reference for our battle sequence. 
Rolling back over to Batman, I decided to take one of the you know most iconic shots from all of modern cinema, uh, the opening of The Dark Knight. And for the text prompt, I thought it would be interesting just to you know take literally the line from the script. Uh, a man on the corner, back to us, holding a clown mask. An SUV pulls up in front of him, the man gets in. Uh, this was the result. The result, and while I do not think that Christopher Nolan is worried about his job at all here, uh, I mean, yeah, it is not you know, the actual film at all, but it did more or less follow directions. And to be fair, that one was cherry picked. Uh, here were some of the other examples that I ended up generating from that initial image. Um, this one's pretty good. This one I thought was really funny with like a chauffeur getting out and like, uh, your car is here, Mr. Joker. <laughs> Interestingly, running one of the script pages without the image reference, just as a straight text to video yielded uh, this as a result, which actually, I mean, I, I'm super impressed with this. I think that this is actually very cinematic, definitely doesn't necessarily look like it's from the Dark Knight, but looks like it could be from some heist movie. Something that I was curious about was what would happen if you fed in an actual photograph. So uh, this is a photo of a younger me at San Diego Comic-Con uh, meeting Scott Ian, the guitarist from Anthrax on the convention floor. So uh, taking this image and running it through Luma, uh, we end up with, well, this, which to me is actually super hilarious. I mean, AI me definitely is super pumped to be there. It definitely loses the coherency in my face, but I think it does register the excitement uh, that I was feeling meeting Scott Ian. Now, in terms of shot extensions, yes, it can totally be done, you know, using the old final frame trick. So, you know, what you would do is at the very end of your clip, you just simply take that last frame, save it out as a screenshot, and then feed it back into the AI video generator with a different prompt. Uh, so for our text to video version uh, with our pirate woman who crosses her arms, we ended up with this, uh, which to be honest, this is still part of the same shot. He turns and moves, and now this is the secondary shot. Um, so yeah, that now becomes a 10 second shot. Will that work for every shot? Well, it may or it may not. Uh, I did end up running kind of that Sora old mining town shot and tried to extend that. Uh, the problem is that with this particular shot, we do get a lot of like decoherence and morphing. The sun kind of goes down. You can see definitely where that transition takes place too with that hard snap. But I think that with some adjustments, some re-rolling and some planning, you can definitely pull off you know, a minute long sequence if you wanted to. I have a lot of exploring to do with this model as well as, you know, trying things out like bashing it into the Kriya upscaler that we took a look at last video. And I'll definitely be taking everything that I learn about it and putting it together as one big like ultimate tutorial lesson. So, you know, if you haven't had the chance to subscribe, uh, I do invite you to do so. Anyhow, go get started on your projects. I cannot wait to see them. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.